Hey Woodchopperoos, Chad here, and I have to apologize. I meant to have a really nice video for you this week, but the jobs in the shop were just piling up, and I had to get some progress done on them for the customers, so I didn't think I was going to get a video out. But then, as I was working here at the router table, I thought this might be a good little opportunity to share something with you. So here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to make some uh, legs for a coffee table for my customer. And on these, I'm going with like a mitered corner form. That's so I don't have to buy a solid three inch thick piece of cherry wood here. Now in the past, when I've tried to do these joints, normally what I used to do was I would run it on a table saw at 45 degrees and then I'd put some glue and try and put them together. Well, several things would happen. First, I'd usually have some kind of gap because the saw blade isn't real consistent and even. Or if I tried to plane them to get the saw marks out, I might go past that 45 so then when I put it together, I don't have a true 90 anymore. If I manage to keep it at a true 90, well then when I go to glue it up, everything is just kind of sliding around on me and I've tried to use biscuits, I've used nails, I've used tape. It always just came out to be a real chore. So, the method that I used for years is I would make a couple of rabbit joints. And let me show you here on a SketchUp drawing. You can see that it has a little eighth inch reveal that shows and the rabbits allow the two pieces to go together. And if you match the direction of the grain on your pieces, well when you sand that people can hardly even tell that it's not a true miter. And I like doing that rabbit because it will hold it in place nice and square, just makes it easier when it comes to gluing and clamping. Well, I don't know why, but I decided to do something different. I went to Woodcraft and I bought the Freud Industrial Miter Locking Bit. Now it was a little pricey, it was like 108 bucks, but I thought if this is going to make things faster for me, you know, I'd give it a try. And that's not typically me, because I've had my tools for many, many years. I don't feel the need to buy new tools, because everything works great for me, even though it's old. And when it comes to products, I'm pretty loyal to the stuff that I use, because it's always worked well. So this was me stepping out a little bit, and I thought I would share with you the experiences I ran into with it. So upon buying it and getting it home, the first thing I realized was that the bit is a half inch shank, which is no problem. My router has that adapter. But when I put it in, well, the router bit, it was bigger than the opening on the router table. Now, fortunately, on my router table, I can remove this plate and allow that to go in. But something you need to consider if you're thinking about buying this one, you have to make sure that your router table is going to be big enough to access it. And it's, it's almost three inches in diameter, the bit. The second thing with this is, because that bit is so big, I can't run my router at full speed. It would just be too dangerous. Now, my router is too old. It doesn't have variable speeds on it. But I was able to do that because in the past, I took a dimmer switch and I just put this in line with the cord to the router and I can dial up and down the speed for it. Okay, now I'm ready to use it. And the feature to this router bit is what it does is it allows me to make 45 degree angles on it, but it also will make this interlocking joint. So this is really cool. Not only does it give me good gluing power, but when that joint locks together, I can put clamps on it any way I want, and it's not going to go anywhere. So I was pretty excited. <clears throat> so I looked at the directions that came with it, which were not much, by the way. I open this up, and I've got this simple little drawing here. And trying to use the measurements and stuff on the drawing, I tried to set the router bit up the way I wanted. Now I have to make two cuts with this. So the first cut I was going to make was the piece in the vertical direction. And using those directions and those drawings, 
I set set the blade up. Um, I used some feather boards so I had pressure on it in front of and exiting the piece. And of course with a push stick I pushed this through and the result it came out looking pretty good. I was happy with that first one. So I just thought for the second piece which was the horizontal I left the bit right where it was pushed the piece through and then when I put the two pieces together I had disastrous results. I mean the pieces were like way way off. So that told me for each of those cuts I had to readjust the bit and that took a lot of time. I probably spent way over an hour and a bunch of scrap wood testing each one, adjusting it up or down, forward and back until I had a really nice fit. Now, the nice thing is, is I'm going to keep these scraps that worked and I'm going to use these for my setup blocks next time. So I won't have to go through that big learning process again. But initially, it took a long time. All right, so like I said, I had the uh, vertical cut went well. The next one was the horizontal. And here's what I ran into. If the bit was going with the grain, it cut really nice. But we always know that sometimes the grain can change in the middle of the board. Or if you just turn it around, now you're going against it. And what happened was the bit would grab and just rip out chunks of the wood. And now I just wasted this whole piece. So I had to come up with another method for doing it that was a little bit safer. What I did was, again, you have to use feather boards on this procedure. I took some quarter inch MDF and my feather board and I put that quarter inch MDF in against the fence and I also did the same exiting and again with another feather board. I have two feather boards, one coming in and one going out and what this does is as I push the piece through it's actually a quarter inch farther away from the bit so it's making a cut but it's only removing a little bit of the material off of the wood. Now I can go back in, remove that quarter inch MDF for plywood, and make the cut all the way through, and then I have a beautiful fitting joint with no tear out. And I gotta say, when it comes to gluing this up and putting clamps on it, it couldn't be any nicer. I was really, really happy with the results that I got on these legs. The corners look crisp and nice. The joints are rock solid. So, overall, if I knew it was gonna be that much work, all that setup, would I spent the 108 bucks for it? No, I probably would have stuck with making my rabbit joints with the stack dado on the table saw. But because I do have it now and I got my setup box, it should be a breeze for next time when I do use it. And I truly believe that every time you have more tools in your shop, it allows you to do more and become a better woodworker. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it's not the one I was hoping to give you. But next week, I'm going to give you a really cool video on how you can become a better woodworker just by doing a couple of simple little tricks that I'm going to show you. So if you like this, please like and subscribe, share it with your friends. And until next time, keep on dancing.